after you know kind of deciding that well i'm gonna at least try to make it out make it somewhere where they're gonna find the body i tried i opened my backpack looking for my first aid kit and i found it and there was nothing in there big enough to cover my head or to put pieces of my face in and i was trying to figure out what to do so I grabbed a, a shirt out of my a long sleeve shirt on my backpack and I put it on upside down with the neck part on my head and I opened up the body of the shirt and I layered all the pieces of my face in there, folded it down, uh, tied the sleeves underneath my underneath my chin real tight to hold my jaw because my jaw was flopping down and then I tied two knots in the back to hold my head straight and just try to keep my head up uh, and, and then. Uh, grabbed a sweatshirt basically threw it on my shoulders to protect me from the sun and uh i tried to stand up i mean the first 10 feet i probably fell well over 100 times i mean i, I couldn't get anywhere uh every time i put weight in my right leg it would just fold it would just collapse and i'd fall over and mm. uh you know using my gun as a as a cane and try to steady myself and uh and i finally figured out what i needed to do I needed to take a small step with my left foot and then slide my right foot forward and I was able to get going that way. But uh, the first hundred feet of the trail was probably the steepest of the whole way. Uh, it led down a, a rocky rocky trail along the edge of a drainage just lined with boulders all the way down. About uh, I guess a third of the way down I lost my footing and I tumbled head over heels all the way down into the drainage below wow probably wow. you know 250 300 feet i rolled all the way down to the bottom and i remember laying there in the bottom thinking like this is it i ain't gonna make it out of here there's no way i was in so much pain my gun was all wrapped up caught up in me and, and i'm just laying there and i and i can't move it the pain is just too much um and, and i at that moment i pulled on my phone and uh i sent a final goodbye to my wife and and the messaging read, uh, you know, I tried, honey, and as I'm laying in the rocks, sitting there listening to the creek, uh, you know, so many thoughts of run through your head at that point in time when you're laying in there, and and I knew that was going to be my final resting place. Um, so I pull out my phone and uh, tried to play some music, and when the, the first song, this well, the one song that came on was a song I played for my daughter uh, the night before while putting it in her bed. It was her uh, favorite nursery rhyme. Uh, the song was uh, Baby Shark. And, and so uh, here I am laying in the boulders yeah. listening to Baby Shark. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. yeah. On repeat. I don't know if it was the song or the thought of, you know, seeing my daughter and my wife again that uh, made me uh, reach up for that rock above me there and just pull myself up and to keep reaching for the next one and just keep trying to make it somewhere where they make it to the main trail of where they're going to find the body and. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think that Baby Shark song definitely gave you some, you know, some will to live. You know, probably that song kind of gave you images of your your daughter Abby, right? And just yeah. uh, you know, brought brought back uh, memories, and you wanted to be there for her for when she grows up. And yeah, it just made you want to continue uh, persevering yeah. through. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that song uh, means a lot more to me than uh, yeah. It's a very to a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that song like, has yeah. been played a lot, you yeah. know, and maybe some people might maybe find it annoying or maybe their <laughs> kids want to spam yeah. that song constantly. I mean, that video alone on YouTube has been viewed 12 billion times. So, yeah, I it's mean, the it, most popular video on YouTube. You know, it's wow. a testament of yeah. how popular it is. Or maybe, maybe you know, the song is, you know, so like positive and innocent and maybe that helped you realize that, you know, there, there's more to life. You know, yeah. why should I just die here you know i could be with my daughter you know this positive maybe that energy from the song because it's just so like there's no negativity it's just baby it's shark preppy, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i guess that's uh, definitely a, a moment of hope for you i guess and and through all, all that uh, i don't th you know i don't think without that song i think without that song you know the outcome could have been different i think uh yeah, i understand else? why it must have a very significant meaning uh for you even though it's just kind of this you know silly kid silly song, kid song. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yep. yeah I, I get it well, at this point you know you're you're hiking back and i think this is like probably one of the most kind of underrated part of the story you know so can you can you tell us how many kilometers you had to hike back from you know the side of the mauling to the truck and then you also had to drive to the panther river lodge at that point right yeah yeah so at this point in time I was a little over 12 kilometers from the from the truck 
Uh, so I had to, on the way out, I crawled up the other side of the drainage and I crawled, crawled quite a ways until I can get to a spot where I can pull myself up and I'd you know, just be stumbling down the trail, kept falling. Um, There's another couple of drainages that I end up falling down and it was just a constant battle. Like every tree, every little rock bush was just sucking with little energy I had. Like it was just a rough go. Every time you get going, things are going well, you'd fall over and then it just... It was painful. Um, a little over, like I said, a little over 12 kilometer hike and crawl. I had to cross, uh, there's a creek you have crossed about 11 times, and there was two um, pretty big hills you had to climb over before you get to the truck. And, uh, you know, once I got to the truck, uh, it was just another challenge. Um, you get to the truck, and I hopped in the seat, started it up, and I'm looking out the window, windshield, and I'm like, where's the end of the hood like i can't i can't even see where the road is i rolled down the window and looked at the ground and i'm like well i can't even tell where the ground starts and, and then i'm thinking like well where am i going to go like who's going to help me you know i mean yeah. if you walk into a place where you're missing all your face like who's going to help you know people are just going to freak out and panic mm. yeah. um and i just they figured well what the heck i'll just going to drive down drive and hopefully run into somebody along the road uh, you know, but I'm looking out the front of my truck through the windshield. All I can see was dark, fuzzy green on either side, and a light spot down the middle. And I figured that light spot was the middle of the road, so I just aimed for that and uh, ended up driving down the road. And I was hoping I'd run into somebody along the road. Uh, you know, 22 kilometers later, I still didn't get find anybody. Uh, it took me about a little over 45 minutes to drive 22 kilometers. Quite a 20. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, it took quite a while. I mean, the road has quite a few twists and turns. Uh, for large majorities of the road, there's only a, a small guardrail, and it just drops off down into the into the down into cliffs below. I mean, the guardrail consisted of uh, steel steel poles uh, shoved in the ground every 15, 20 feet with a steel cable in between them. Not mm-hmm. really anything fancy. Uh, there was a couple of real sharp serpentines in the road where if you're not paying attention, you will hit the ditch. And I, I'm surprised I made it through those. And I got got to the road. Um, well, I guess it would be the beginning, but there's a row of uh, like resorts or campgrounds. And the first one I came to was uh, called Panther River Resort. I remember this place because uh, we were there the weekend before me. My wife and daughter stayed there. The drive was kind of hard to get to figure out, but I got in. I got into there, and at first I tried parking my vehicle in the parking lot next to everybody else. But uh, I mean, I couldn't see, and, and yeah. I couldn't tell how close I was or if I could do it. How do you think you managed to uh, drive that? Was it like muscle memory at that point? I know you mentioned you know you know the trails pretty well. Like you know your yeah. your vision is all compromised at that point, practically blind. Like I, I find it pretty amazing that you know you you actually managed to drive back. Uh, you know, I've driven that road hundreds of times, and it's always been in the dark, most of it. So, uh, you know, a little mm-hmm. bit of muscle memory. Okay. Um, okay, so you knew the road, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I knew the road quite well. And what I, when I was driving on the road, I thought I was driving in the ditch most of the time because you could feel it start getting really, really rough. And so I was kind of trying to hang it on the edge of the rough stuff. So I knew I was on the edge of the road, but, but not, not quite, quite off. Like, I thought I was driving yeah. through the ditch for the majority of it. I thought my truck was actually totaled by the time I got to Panther River. I mean, it but just yeah, felt like no scratches. Yeah, yeah it just not felt a scratch like, on the car. <laughs> no, no, that's what everybody says. It was like not a scratch. So, <laughs> I can't, um, that's awesome. Yeah. When they came to pick up the vehicle, they they started it up, and the only thing was there was just blaring music, and they're like, you could tell that I couldn't really hear much because the music was so loud in the truck. Uh, oh, you couldn't. Uh, you yeah, didn't hear the loudness as much. No. <laughs> yeah, it was it was kind of funny, and they told me about it. like yeah, the, the stereo was just cranked. Like I just I, I remember you know they're feeling a little rough, and you kind of driving over. Okay, well, the guardrail's got to be coming up here soon because there's a turn, and you know you're just trying to you're really slow, and you're staring ahead, and you're you're trying to look. Cause, I mean, I had to tilt my head back way back so in order to see or hold my eye and try to hold the yeah. steering wheel, and then you'd feel. You know, the, uh, regarding your your eye, when you said your eye came out of your eye socket, like how far? Like that's what I'm trying to imagine. Well, I was like, hanging up as far as my glasses here. Like it was tilt down pretty good, so I had to oh, tilt my head pretty you far had to tilt back up to yeah to see. Goodness. So there was the bone, the eye socket actually that was holding it, and that was all yeah. crunched and it was hanging down. And I could just I could just use my hand to hold it up. 
and you have to like improvise at that point, right? No one teaches you like, oh, when your eyes, you know, hang out, but you do, right? It's like, what it's you like <laughs> you kind of have to almost learn how to reuse your body at that point. It's crazy. You, re- you had to learn how to walk again on the way there. I feel like David Goggins would like the story. Do you know David Goggins? No. <laughs> David oh, Goggins never heard is of oh, yeah. really like an inspirational guy. He runs a lot, you know, he's like stay hard all the time. And like he, he focuses on like, you know, the mental toughness and he's like an ex Navy SEAL. Yeah. Right? Ex Navy SEAL and stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah like very like he, hardcore in his yeah, regiment. Yeah, really hardcore. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think he would really like your story. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you just, you find but, yeah. ways of, you know, when you sit there and you, you either got to tilt your head way back or you're like, oh, you're trying to move it. And, you know, the blood's dripping all the place. And it's just, uh, I mean, it's just annoying because you're just you're just constantly distracting, and then you got my whole face is just hanging down, and so I you know I pulled into Panther River there, and um, I was actually pretty nervous or nervous to actually stop. I figured I was just going to drive right straight to the nearest town, which was Sundry, and just go right straight to the hospital because um, I mean who'd who'd want to help you? So I pulled into Panther River there and tried to park in the parking lot and. I didn't really want to be a burden to anybody there. And I go through the parking lot, tried to park, couldn't do it. Ended up driving right up to the main lodge, just drove right through the no parking area, right down the trail, basically stopped right at the ramp of the lodge and got out and walked up the ramp. And at Panther River, there was like a circular octagon shaped uh, building. And they have the, it's a log cabin. They have the trusses coming down, big logs. And if you're not paying attention, you can smack your head as you're walking along the deck. Well, all along the deck, they have these big bay windows. And I remember I'm just kind of shuffling along the edge, you know, have my head all tilted to make sure I don't hit overhanging logs. And I noticed this little uh, little shadow in the window just kind of run away, like move away fast. And at the same time, I was opening up the door and I hear this little vo- this, uh, voice of a kid saying, Grandma, somebody's trying to play a prank on us. And I, oh, wow. And I look like a zombie, you know, I'm kind of hunched over, blood's everywhere, and I've got the little walk going on, like the shuffle, and and I was just like, no, I, you know, I got mauled by a bear, and these ladies are just stunned, like they didn't know what to do, and... 